Welcome back to Imagine AI Live pop-up podcast here at our inaugural event in Las Vegas. How are you doing, Liz? I am doing really, really well. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so energized. I really feel like this is such a special event, such a special moment. Uh, and I'm really loving all the people I'm meeting, all that I'm learning and being able to share with folks. Yeah, as you can see, we have a sold out crowd here. We're very impressed. When Steve and I first uh, talked about this and started marketing, we were like, if 100 people show up, we'll be happy and it'll be the best party for 100 people. But yeah. to have to fill out and be at 500, it's great. So. Yeah, no, it's it's quite incredible. Mm -hmm. um, I, I definitely feel that you guys have really done a great job of building this brand. I love the fact that, like, as Steve said, you ate your own dog food in the sense that you use generative AI to help with creating a lot of this. I think it's really amazing to yeah, see, right? Because that's it. It's like you have to walk the talk. Yeah. Yeah. Well, tell me about your company sure. and what you're doing. Sure. So I'm the founder and CEO of the International Social Impact Institute, which I started in 2020. Actually, linked, I launched it on LinkedIn Live because it was during the pandemic, so we couldn't actually do an event. And, and I did it because I, what I'd found is I worked in the social impact space for 20 years with nonprofit organizations. I teach at NYU in the Center for Global Affairs. Okay. Uh, and so I teach nonprofit organizations how to raise money using uh, digital technology and digital mm -hmm. storytelling. And what I found in working with lots of different nonprofits and social enterprises and like, is that a lot of times the smaller ones really lack the skill set to be able to tell a story that can compel a funder to support the work that they're doing, right? Mm -hmm. And to connect with them. And so I thought, if I could find a way to be able to deliver that kind of knowledge and the connections and networks to help them, then we can you know, really help to scale their impact, right? And a lot of it has to do with the fact that you can do this online most really cost effectively, especially for your smaller organization. So we really focus on digital storytelling. Where AI comes in, should I go there yet? Sorry? Where AI yeah, comes please. in is an intern of mine uh, last year um, told me about ChatGPT. And so in January I had COVID, I was stuck at home. So I started playing with it. And at first I was like, oh my gosh, we can use this for like our company stuff, right? So like I tested it, like we were working on our um, strategic plan. And I'm like, oh my gosh, we can refine all of this significantly. And then I was like, oh, we can apply this to like our website content and all that. And then I was like, oh, we, we were actually working on a webinar series. And I was like, let me see if I can kind of refine like the descriptions and the titles. And it worked. And then like, I saw like our open rates went up really high in terms of like when we did our e-blast and things like that. And then I thought, okay, we're already teaching people digital storytelling. We're already showing them how to tell their message online. Why don't we show them how they can use generative AI to, to really create more concise messages, how to even use this for like grant, you know, when they're writing their grant applications. Mm -hmm. And that's really kind of how all this came together. Wow. <laughs> and so your like clients are... Uh, nonprofits. So they're nonprofits. They're foundations. They're governments. They're they're universities. Uh, for companies, would be like mission driven. So like triple bottom line mm -hmm. companies. Is there a story you could tell of a client that you've helped with the AI tools and sure. the consulting you've done? Sure. So actually, someone just wrote me about how she used us for used. Uh, she used Boodle for for uh, writing her dissertation, for editing her dissertation. Oh, so wow. I did a training for a bunch of Cornell alumni about a month ago. And I basically showed them how to use this to improve their personal brand and also to help them with their alumni engagement mm -hmm. efforts, like in the clubs that they're running. And so this woman wrote back to me and she said, Liz, I tried Boodle like you told us. And I did a demo for them and I showed them how to use it. Uh, and she's like, I actually edited my dissertation uh, with it and it really saved me a ton of time and gave me some ideas I hadn't even thought about. Uh, so that's a, like one example. But in terms of like uh, a nonprofit organization, um, we worked with King Baudouin Foundation United States. It's a Belgian foundation that um, has operations here in the U.S. as well. And they operate as fiscal sponsors for nonprofit organizations that are outside the U.S. but need to be able to raise money in the U.S. And so uh, we developed webinar series for them, for nonprofit organizations that attracted 2,000 nonprofits. And what we were able to do is by refining all the content mm -hmm. um, using generative AI, we were able to actually make it much more appealing to, you know, to a lot more nonprofits to get mm -hmm. involved. But what's even more important is after the very first webinar, we sent out a post event survey and based on those results, you know, usually you can tabulate the results on your own, but I put them in chat GPT and I said, do some sentiment. And we took also the, the comments from the, the chat section of, of the zoom 
we're able to get some insights in terms of what are the topics that resonate most and that they want to see in subsequent webinars so that then we were able to, to tailor the content accordingly. So I found that to be extremely helpful and that really helped in terms of boosting mm. um, satisfaction with the uh, webinars that we developed. Yeah. So AI is changing so fast and there's like new stuff every day, every week. How do you as like the CEO of yeah. this, like stay ahead of it and implement it into your program? I actually, I'm on mailing lists. I'm like, like three or four different lists. So every day in my inbox, I'm the seeing newsletters. Right? Well, I got to tell you, it's a, it's a little bit overwhelming because it's like, you know, all the time. Yeah. Um, I follow a lot of folks who are really, it was actually, there are people who are in this, speaking at this conference. I've been following them. Mm -hmm. But the reason why I actually initially looked at Imagine AI Live was I was thinking, should I take a class so that I can kind of, you know, sort of um, upskill because, you know, everything's changed since I started playing with this, like, you know, to your point. And so I was looking and I found Imagine AI Live and I was like, oh, this would be great to come and spend a couple of days learning very quickly and whatever I'm interested in, I can always deep dive later. But so like something like this, just even the first three uh, talks I went to this morning, I got I learned so much uh, that I think is even putting me ahead of <laughs> what folks are currently looking at. Mm -hmm. I think it's really, it's it's the kind of thing that it's not necessarily that I need to be in a classroom to learn this. I need to be in the community. And I feel like this is what you guys have created as a community, a tribe of folks that, you know, you can tap into and say, hey, what are you doing about this? Or can we collaborate on this mm -hmm. or whatever it may be. And so that's what's so exciting about this opportunity for me. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm glad you're uh, feeling that because that's what we're definitely trying to build here is a community of AI enthusiasts that are trying to help each other and learn from each other and and look towards the future and right. and we're all going to rise together. That's and, I, and that's the whole yeah. thing, right? And I, I really feel that way. And I, I feel like everyone I've met and had like conversations with is definitely of that ethos in the sense that you know they're not sort of here trying to be extractive, but they're like you know how can we be of mutual benefit mm. and how can we figure this out together and what can we co-create? And I think yeah. that that is such an amazing spirit because you know that's not usually how things go. Uh, yeah. But that's definitely been my experience here. Yeah, well, maybe that goes to something about AI in general. It's more of like a positive sum experience where right. value is just being added to everyone that's using it. Right. And you're able to do more with your time right. and learn more. Right. Yeah. I want to give you another um, example of how um, I've used AI. But this is my capacity as a board member. I sit on a, an organization that uh, that is it's named the, the Court of Master Sommeliers America. So they're the ones that produce the master sommeliers that you have mm -hmm. like 167 of them in the US. They also produce programming for other folks who are wine enthusiasts. Mm -hmm. But one of the problems that was brought up in a board meeting we had last year in, Sept in September was that they were interested in teaching the course in Japan. But the problem was they didn't want people who were ne not necessarily fluent in English to be penalized because what they're testing for is wine knowledge, not English mm -hmm. acumen. So they were like, no, how can we solve this? I'm like, oh, we just need to have live translation. And they're like, how can we do that? I'm like, with AI. So I found Wordly AI. Uh, we contacted them. We did a pilot here in the US, um, actually at Cornell, with a bunch of students who have a bit of a wine knowledge. And we we're able to s translate simultaneously, I think, into eight languages. And based on that, we were able to launch the first course in Japan in February. Wow. Yeah, really? it's incredible, right? Yeah. So that's an accessibility yeah. issue for us, right? And I think that was really, really incredible to see that happen. Yeah, definitely. The, the accessibility, just like opening up access to people, it's it, it's astounding. Right. So you, you told me um, earlier that you were able to pull John Rossman aside for yeah. an hour yeah. and he was a keynote speaker here sure. today. I'm just wondering what kind of insights did he, did he give you? So first of all, um, I was kind of giving feedback on, on what I learned about mm. it from his session. So I was looking at his content, but I was looking at his delivery. So I was really excited about that. And then in terms of insights, I was like, what's the thing I should be trying to do now to kind of like solidify? And he's like, you need the book, right? And everyone says that. I, and I guess for me, I feel like a book, by the time you publish the book, it feels like it's already out of date. And, mm. I'm, and I'm constantly producing content, right? Because I teach, mm. I'm speaking, I'm doing... But he's like, you need the thing. Mm -hmm. You need the thing for the thing. The physical thing. So, for right, the thing. right. And yeah. so he kind of gave me some insights into where to kind of target that thing cool. um, based on, you know, what I, what I shared with him. So that was really valuable. Yeah. Uh, he just kind of gave me 
some insight into sort of, you know, how to take advantage of being here and, and, and the like. So I just found it to be really valuable. But I want to tell you how I met him because I think okay. you're going to love that. Yeah. And I did this with a number of the speakers. So, I, you know, how on the, on the website you had everyone's bio. Yeah. So I took all the bios and I put them into Boodle. <laughs> and Boodle, I already had like a thread for Imagine AI Live. Mm-hmm. So it had my bio, it had a, what I was going to be talking about, the whole thing. And I said, I want to send a LinkedIn request to these speakers. Can you craft a, a message that's tailored to each one of them that represents what I'm going to be talking about, but also how the, there's a nexus, right? And what I admire what they do. And it did that. So John was one of the first people I wrote to. And he immediately responded to me. He's like, yeah, I'd love to meet up. Um, and that's literally, you know, what happened. What was even cooler, and I'm going to talk about this tomorrow in my presentation, was um, our opening keynote speaker, the, C- the global CEO of, of Ogilvy. So Boodle wrote something that was tied to his bio and to mine. Mm. But then I, I thought, no, I want to mention that when I was 14 years old, I read On Advertising by uh, David Ogilvy. And I was like, I, that's more important for me to mention. And so it was able to re- rewrite it for me. And so I, met, I sent that to him. He literally accepted my LinkedIn request within 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah. So I think that like, to me, that's the testament to the, like how these tools can really help you help facilitate that you know the power of social media and ai combined with with content and like just figuring out the distribution once you get the distribution figured out and kind of stick with the process of like it doesn't need to be perfect you know it's an effort it's an effort and you're putting your your thoughts behind it and you're putting it out there to the world right and like just getting into that habit i think it's very important and and i think that's what it is because i think that everyone feels like oh you got to know this perfectly before you can but i think it's that we're in a period of time where you just have to get out there yeah right just get it out there figure it out you know and you can always iterate right but if you wait until it's perfect then you miss the opportunity because things are moving so fast yeah and people appreciate the authenticity and i think that i think that you deliver that for sure and it's just getting that the daily messaging if you can get to that daily and then just keeping keeping it authentic keeping it yourself that's really what it is and i and i think that so if we segue a little bit to what i'm talking about tomorrow Mm -hmm. and guess who helped me figure out what to what to to talk about chat gpt Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was literally here are all the speakers. Here's the con- here's the conference. Um, what am I uniquely positioned to speak best about? Oh, and it was really on this, yeah. in this particular conference, personal branding, because personal branding actually cuts across industries, ages and, and the like. And I've been teaching about this for a very long time because any nonprofit or even business leader has to have a personal brand. Right. In order yeah. to be able to bring whatever idea to bear. And so, um, so tomorrow I'm going to be talking a little bit about that, obviously in 20 minutes, yeah. but, um, the way I look, I approached this conference was there's an on stage, there's an online, right? There's a sort of the pre online with a social media and you've got posts online, but you also have the table. So I treated the table as part of the whole presentation the whole mm. conference presentation. Mm-hmm. So I was able to use Boodle to generate, like to synthesize to 20 minutes for the presentation. But then we also created a, a video reel of all of our content, like around what we've done with generative AI. So we have examples that we've done for clients. We have uh, testimonies, we have events that we've done and all that. So that someone who, I don't even have to be at the table. She doesn't have to be at the table, mm-hmm. but they can see a little bit of what we're doing. And by that, I'm showing how you're how you can really brand in an experience like this and how that can really help you move whatever it is you're trying to do forward. That's great, Liz. And wrapping up here, how can people find you? So I'm at Liz and Gonzi on every platform. It's socialimpactinst.com. You know, I'm, I'm pretty much on every platform. Okay, uh, awesome. And I'm also at NYU, so they can also look at Liz and Gonzi at NYU. I'm teaching a course called AI for Impact uh, on uh, Friday, May 3rd. It's a one day, eight hour course um, where you come in, whatever it is that you want to work on. If you were working on, I had the the fall version of this. I had a woman who was trying to apply for jobs. So she came with her resume. We worked on her cover letters. We worked on her LinkedIn profile images and all that. Mm -hmm. And then someone else was trying to do a grant application. So we worked on that. So whatever it is you're trying to do around your digital storytelling uh, that you need AI to help you with, Mm -hmm. I'm going to walk you through my frameworks. I'm going to help you end that day with that thing created that's great that's great yeah. well thanks so much for thank sitting you. down here with me and let's do it again Absolutely. in the full version uh, remotely in thank the future you. here this is awesome okay. and and thank you so much for putting this together i i, no. I promise you 
they're, we're going to look back and be like, this was incredible. And I really think when Steve said this is like a Woodstock moment, <laughs> I really feel it is. I think yeah. someone's going to do a movie about this and say, where were you when they did this? Oh, oh that'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I Thank love you. It. Okay. Thank you. Thank <laughs> okay. you, Liz. Give me my shit. Give me my shit.